And welcome back to The Closers here. Happy to have you alongside. And uh, happy to be joined for our weekly Missouri Orthopedic Institute uh, session. This time around, it is Dr. Tiffany Bohan. She joins us uh, here this afternoon. Don't forget their free clinic on Saturday morning. It is over at the Missouri Orthopedic uh, Clinic. It is 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. It is an initial assessment and or referrals. It is a fully staffed clinic. And that is a great place to uh, go when, you know, your, your son or your daughter wakes up on Saturday morning and either tells you, good luck, or you notice that things just aren't quite like they were the day before. So that's a free clinic from 9 to 10 a.m. over the Missouri Orthopedic Institute. Uh, again, Tiffany Bohan joining us here, uh, uh, a former athlete for the University of Missouri as well. So uh, where, what uh, athletic endeavor was it? I was a swimmer here at Mizzou. Okay. All right. You can pull that microphone closer to you and, and, or you slide the chair in, whichever. All right. Uh, I'm not going to ask you when, but what did your experience as a swimmer how did that help you with what you're doing right now as, as a sports medicine physician? I think it's priceless. Having been an athlete, I'm able to really relate to the athletes and understand being a D1 athlete, what that entails, being a student athlete with school, with practice, performance, um, talking to professors about missing, um, really juggling a lot of things, time management, et cetera. And, uh, and the first thing that an athlete always has, and I had a daughter who swam, when they, when the the athletic trainer or the physical the therapist comes in and says, "All right, well, you need to rest," mm-hmm. and you know she's like, "Well, that's all cool and everything, but that ain't happening." So, as a doctor, how do you address that? The because the athlete wants to keep going, regardless mm-hmm. of what you tell them. Absolutely, that's a great question. So, relative rest is what I like to use because I get that if I go to a coach and say. You know, they need to be out for three weeks. That's not going to fly. So I understand <laughs> yeah. if you can limit, you know, as in swimming, if there's certain strokes that are bothering you, mm-hmm. trying to avoid those strokes. Um, can you vertical kick in the deep end? Can you get on the elliptical? Can you bike? Can you do something um, to keep that fitness level up? Because I get it because you want to, to stay fit, but mm-hmm. you also need to rest whatever body part is bothering them, too. So it's relative rest is the term that so I like. What other sports do you cover? I cover so swimming and diving here mm-hmm. at Mizzou, and then softball. Okay, all right. Well, you got a brand new head coach to work with yes, too. Yes, absolutely. Okay. okay, and with that, how much training is involved with the head coach? That okay, you know, congratulations on the job and everything, but this is how we're going to have to work things here. Yeah, great question. So we have a great athletic training department here mm-hmm. at Mizzou, and so they're really the go between between the physicians and the coaches um, to make sure we keep the athletes safe and inform them of what the plan is. Um, to keep them out there, but to keep them safe. And so in, in the swimming and diving, uh, the university is, is unique in an aspect of they have both a men's and a women's uh, swimming and diving team. And you've also got the softball. Obviously, it's the women's softball team. Men and women, we've talked with Dr. Aaron Gray on the on the program before. You, While everybody's joints and ligaments and everything like that, if you, you strip everything away, it's all the same. But the injuries tend to be different or occur in different fashions. Which... Which one has the worst set of injuries as you go through your career? Which which sex has the worst set? Um, good question. I would say from what I see, um, I see quite a bit of eating disorders, female athlete okay. triad, and I think that can be um, a really lifelong issue. So with eating so disorders. So that's outside. That's, is that, do you consider that an injury? Um, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. So I think with that, I'm seeing them initially for a stress fracture. Okay. So they might have a stress fracture from this underlying disordered eating or eating disorder. Um, so a lot of times it's not just an eating disorder. It's they're coming in with hip pain and I worry about a femoral neck stress fracture, or their tibia. I'm worried about a stress fracture from running. So I think the injuries um, that are involved with that, definitely I'm seeing that firsthand and then working backward to realize then for men and women, if we're not fueling appropriately, that our bodies will break down. Mm-hmm. Dr. Tiffany Bohan, Missouri Orthopedic Institute, with us here on The Closers. You, you, you mentioned the, the the female athlete triad, and we've, in the past, we have dealt with, uh, we actually had uh, Misty Hyman, uh, former uh, Olympic gold medalist here on the program, um, talking about body image and eating disorder, and that for, when, as a physician and for a parent who is out there listening to this, what is the triad? It is. So it's three things at the top of the pyramid is energy availability. So how are we fueling our body? Um, And then at the lower left of the triangle, it is um, menstrual irregularity. So kind of hormonal imbalances. Mm -hmm. And then the lower right, it is bone health or osteoporosis. So that's what we're trying to avoid is stress fractures, 
long-term osteoporosis, um, just bone health that is not um, optimized, especially when you know we're dealing with college-age kids, high school, junior high. That's when you should be building your bones. And so the effect of the triad on your bones um, is a very critical time. You've had 90% of your bone mass um, by around the age of 18. And so if that's when we're breaking down the bone, getting the stress fractures, we're really long-term affecting um, the bones in a negative way. How closely do you kind of... I mean, I, Back up here just a second. I mean, you, you kind of get an idea as you're watching the athletes practice and and kind of learning more about them. Who who is on that that li, you know kind of a watch for type list? Are there certain things that you look for as a physician when you're when you're watching the athletes either practice or compete that you you see as ooh I've I've got to jump in here. There there is a potential for something going wrong here. Absolutely. You know, in aesthetic sports where they're wearing a swimsuit or a leotard, it's mm-hmm. easier to tell that. Um, but definitely, you know, just looking at them, also following um, information. We get DEXA scans on athletes and we have um, persons' body fats to follow. So things, numbers that we can actually follow. And then also, like I said, as they present with stress fractures or they keep getting sick um, or they have this tendonitis that won't improve, you know, I, that allows me to see them. And then I realize that they look thin. I compare the weights that I have from my clinic and can see that they've, you know, lost 20 pounds. Mm-hmm. And that's not typical for a college um, age kid to be losing 20 pounds. And so then I can intervene at that point. And like I said, the trainers are great to be able to keep their finger on the pulse because really they're the eyes at practice every day. Right. How closely do you, do you in this case, then work with uh, the mental health aspect of things because this that can be a huge weight on on the collegiate athlete it's not just you know you you think about the football player or the baseball player or the basketball player and all the pressures but as you mentioned and i see this in in my role as pa announcer for usa swimming and ncaa you get these kids going around all day long in a swimsuit Mm -hmm. so everybody sees who you are in a swimsuit Mm -hmm. so how closely do you have to work with the mental health aspect of athletes Absolutely. A big part of it, you know, especially with when there is a full blown eating disorder, um, you know, it's a team approach. So it's not just seeing as a physician such as myself, they're seeing a psychiatrist or having a counselor, a dietitian, athletic trainers involved, the coaches involved. So it's that whole multidisciplinary um, effect that we have to have. Otherwise, it's not going to be successful. How do you crack that nut to begin with, though? Um, Great question. So uh, really, you know, Letting the athlete, the patient know that we have to have this team approach. Um, you know, not everyone's jumping up and down to get everybody involved, but really that's our protocol. And we know mm-hmm. that that's um, the standard of care and treating this. And so really laying that out and saying that we are there to help them, whether it's intentional or not. I'm not there to, to judge them. Um, you know, some are just working out more than they're fueling and then they end up with this issue. So it's really um, just a good caring culture that we want to take care of them now and long term. Mm-hmm. Dr. Tiffany Bohan, Missouri Orthopedic Institute. Their free clinic is on Saturday mornings from 9 to 10 a.m. Assessments, x-rays are available. It's a fully staffed clinic. And if you need a referral, you can get a referral. And and we kind of spawn out of the the actual physical injury into more of the mental health and everything. We'll, so we'll circle back to the, the, the physical injuries things. For a female for a female athlete, and we, we see this in uh, especially in basketball, ACL tears. Are there certain indicators or markers that you can look at and visit with not just the athlete but also the parents? of, okay, these are some of the things that we need to work on and, and we can strengthen the musculature to prevent these type of injuries. Absolutely. So you'll see, you know, when patients come down, you know, getting a rebound, if you watched, um, you know, a guy come down versus um, a girl, you can tell what we call valgus. So when the knee kind of goes inward mm-hmm. a little bit, that's really concerning for an injury knock to knee. the ACL. Yeah, yeah. knock knee. Yeah. Great. Um, so if they have that, then that uh, makes us more nervous that we need to strengthen their glute muscles. So kind of the posterior buttock muscles, if you mm-hmm. will, um, to help not get that knock knee um, effect when they're landing. Um, so that's a good good thing to watch for and very common in females just with the cue angle. Um, so the anatomy is different in the knee um, in terms of the notch and then the cue angle and then the muscles um, definitely affect it. So if we can get that stronger and do some what we call prehab um, whether that's for basketball or soccer, you know, different sports where we see ACLs often, especially in females, it's good to to do that kind of prehab, if you will. What's the most common injury you see among your female patients? I would say 
patellofemoral knee pain. That's just in all comers in my clinic. Okay. Um, so just kind of that anterior knee pain because of the Q angle. Mm-hmm. And just, like I said, when you have them do a single leg squat and then their knee goes in, gets knock kneed and they're a marathon runner and they're doing that for 26.2 miles. And if they can't stand and do a single leg squat and doing that for 26 miles, that's going to wear on them. And they kind of chicken leg it down toward the end. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> okay. And and this is, you know, you, you back to the, the earlier about uh, menstruation and all that. Do you find during different time periods, during different different portions of the month as, as a female athlete cycling through that ligaments and, and joints kind of get either looser or tighter that is, leading to injuries? That's a really good question. They are doing research on that. So the last conference I went to for that we talked about the female athlete triad, that's really the hot topic right okay. now. So you really have your finger on the pulse of female athlete triad. No, I just something I grabbed yeah, out of the air. Right. I was like, wow, this is a, and this seems. <laughs> that's really good. Okay. So yeah, that's literally um, what the topic is out there. Because if we can, you know, realize when our athletes more, you know, injury prone in the weight room, should mm-hmm. we pull them out that week um, and not have them be out there? Um, so they are looking into that. So I don't have a great answer yet, but. Maybe next year. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I'm sure that we'll still be doing this. I'm probably not by the next visit you have here in a couple of weeks, but yeah. you know, in, in, in the near, very near future. For you at, over at the university, what's what's been the most amount of fun that you have? I mean, where it just really reinvigorates you that yeah, I, this was the right decision for me. Yeah, I really enjoy working with athletes. I think just having been an athlete, knowing I wanted to get back into that world, I really enjoy giving back. Um, to where I spend a lot of time mm-hmm. um, and hours. So it's fun to kind of be on the other side um, and be able to help the athletes um, in the training room and at the pool and just be in that environment. It's just a really good environment to be in. And, and you mentioned the athletic training staff. Uh, the The cooperative nature of, of that, is that usual, unusual? Where, 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 does, where does the University of Missouri kind of fall on that? Yeah, from I mean, I'm born and raised here, and this is all I know, except for when I did my fellowship um, out okay. in New York City. So I work with St. John's there, um, and the New York Giants, mm-hmm. um, and the New York Mets. And so everywhere I've been, there's been great relationships between trainers. So for me, um, it's you know great everywhere. Yeah. Um, but I could be being naive, but I think they have a great staff there. They work really hard. Nobody knows how many hours the trainers really put in. They get there before, they're there after. Um, so they work really hard, and we appreciate that. Yeah, my swimmer was was a trainer. Oh, really? There, and she still is actually a certified athletic oh, trainer. Wow. So yeah, I'm I'm familiar they're with great. the hours. Yes. Um, yeah, the, a lot of hours that those uh, those young ladies and men put in over mm-hmm. there at at, uh, at the Matsy. Um, as as this clinic is is going on again, 10 a.m. to uh, or 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Missouri Orthopedic Institute. Uh, it is a free walk in clinic on Saturday mornings for those bumps and bruises. And yeah, I mean, listen, if there's a sign of concussion, and we've we've hit this every single week, but but for you as well, I'm going to do this until everybody has got this. Just they're t- tired of hearing it. They've got it memorized. Concussions, football season. What do parents need to be on the watch out for? Not just the night of. But but first thing in the morning to get them to this clinic. Yeah, I think parents are great because they really know their kids and they know how they look and how they're acting. So I think, you know, having a headache, dizziness, uh, feeling out of it, feeling like they've had a few to drink and they haven't if they know what that feels like. Um, So definitely, you know, a headache usually plus something else is Mm -hmm. what we get concerned about. Um, And if they're worried at all, bring them in. Um, Definitely. We're happy to see them. All right. Yeah. the, the, The catchphrase, I guess, here on this one is when in doubt, get them in. Yeah. In the game, yeah. you want to take them out, but in the yeah. uh, in the clinic on Saturday morning, you want to get them in there, get them get that assessment taken care of. Absolutely, Doctor Bohan, thank you. I appreciate thank the you. time.